It's almost 20 past eight. Our next guest is a man who's brought the world's wildlife into everyone's living room, Sir David Attenborough. Good morning to you. Good morning. And what are you working on at the moment? Uh, well, not just very much at the moment, but uh, we are making a series about the natural history of the Mediterranean, and nothing much happens in the Mediterranean natural history-wise any more than it does here because of the weather mm -hmm. until spring comes. But once spring really gets going, we shall be uh, going too pretty hard. Yeah, I was, uh, want to talk to you about natural history, but what I'm also interested in is you regard one of your greatest achievements as your involvement with the introduction of colour television to this country. Well, that's true, yeah, I suppose. Um, I didn't know I'd said that, but I'm okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so w what were you actually doing at the time? Were you controller of BBC I 1 I was controller of BBC 2, two then, and yeah. the, the sort of the technical situation is difficult to remember now, but uh, until then, uh, the... St television standards on which we all worked were 405 lines with, yeah. on your television set. Uh, and 405 lines was a standard, but rather a low standard actually, but was the best that could be achieved in 1937, which was when it started. Yes. Uh, and we hadn't got the technology to make it more high definition. When colour came, it, the engineers reckoned it had to be uh, 625. Uh, so BBC Two started, pioneered a new lineage and because it was the only one that was on that lineage, it was the only one that could introduce colour television. And did it go with a bomb immediately, with any problems? Uh, well, the main problem was the shortage of equipment. Um, the uh, number of cameras that we had, that we started uh, um, the service with, was uh, something like four or six. I mean, as you know, the, you know, we all know there are f at least four or six cameras in mm -hmm. any one studio. Now, to try and start a whole service with no more than half a dozen cameras is really quite hard going. And we had to work out very carefully what we were going to use them for. And for a long time, the service was actually what we used to call piebald. That is to say, there were just some programs that were in colour and others that were in black and white. And uh, so I had to devise, we had to devise, ways in which we could get the maximum hourage out of any one camera. And it suddenly dawned on us that one of the ways you could do this actually was on a snooker table. Because you only actually need three cameras to produce hours and hours and hours of snooker television. You need a camera at the top which gives you the wide shot, uh, a camera which gives you the medium shot from the man who's actually doing the thing, and then one other which can al alternate. And with those three you could produce ten hours of snooker. So that was very exciting for us. So we introduced snooker television. So anybody who says that we see far too much snooker television and the chap who invented it ought to be shot, I'm afraid You're they the have man. to aim, <laughs> aim at me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but then you sort of got fed up presumably with the administrative life, did you, and decided to go back on the road? Well, that's putting it a bit steep. I, I mean, I'd done eight years. I did eight years, first as controller of BBC Two and then responsible for both BBC One and BBC Two. And eight years is quite a long time sits behind a desk, and um, I thought, well, I've, I've uh, paid my dues, I've done my duty, and now I'll go and have some more fun. Yes, sort of get up to your knees in swamps and things like that. Well, that sort of thing. Yes, yes like, he does. <laughs> well, yes, he, he does in a way, doesn't he? Yes. <laughs> and what does your brother, as much of interest, think of your lifestyle? Barmy. Does he? Yeah, well, <laughs> I think he thinks I'm a little odd. Mind you, I think he's pretty odd too. But uh, uh, I mean, he—I he, mean—he doesn't actually mm. particularly get on fire about fossils. Um, and I suppose, well, I, being more serious, I couldn't do what he does. I, I, I couldn't possibly make a film like Gandhi. I, I mean, the thought of having. Um, I don't know, uh, 3,000 people you have to have to control for a shot is my idea of a nightmare. Uh, it would uh, drive me bananas. Um, I much prefer sitting in a hide uh, with perhaps 10,000 um, wildfowl in front of me. That, over whom you have no control. Over whom I have no control. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's the fascination, isn't yeah. it? Well, stay, we will chat again later. Thanks very much for the time being. We'll take a break.